Waters? Here. Moore? Here. O'Kane? Here. Jane Shaner? Here. Scott? Here. Please stand for a moment of silent prayer followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Right out here, it doesn't. <clears throat> Mr. Schnee. There we go. Thank you. God help. I don't know how this got made out just to you. I, I don't know. I don't either because I know your work of that thing and she had to have a lot to do with it. So <laughs> we have a commendation that reads, whereas you are to be commended for taking the time, the initiative, and the effort to create a beautiful yard that contributes greatly to your neighborhood and to the city of Sioux City. And where you should be proud of the work you have done and the beauty you have created. And whereas we thank you for us you for allowing our citizens to enjoy your beautiful yard and for teaching by example the merits of beautification in the community. Now, therefore, I, Robert E. Scott, Mayor of the City of Sioux City, Iowa, on behalf of the City, do hereby commend Rich Nee of 5005 Laurel Court for exhibiting pride of ownership and being a recipient of the Sioux City of Sioux City Yard of the Month Award. Present this to you guys. You, Say a few words. I appreciate this. Uh, it was a lot of hard work, but uh, we enjoy it. Good. Jimmy, you got anything? Sure. This is our 12th year, so thanks for your support. We're wow. rolling, so. Really nice. we, we get to see neat things. The pictures will show up in the journal. So. All right. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wharton, would you come forward, please? What's his kid's name? Look at the guitar. For those of you who don't know, What's Mr. Wharton used to be a Andrews. member of this chamber. We have a proclamation that reads, whereas David James Bancroft was an American professional baseball shortstop and manager, he played in the major league for the Philadelphia Phillies, the New York Giants, the Boston Braves, and the Brooklyn Robins between 1915 and 1930. Whereas ba Bancroft was born in Sioux City on April 20th, 1891, <coughs> Bancroft made his major league de de debut with the Phillies in 15 and was traded to the Giants when the slick fielding shortstop led the Giants to the 20 World Series crown. Bancroft serves as a player and manager for the Braves and later was a manager for three teams in the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. He returned to Sioux City in 1936 as manager of the Sioux City Cowboys in the Western League. Whereas Bancroft was considered the best shortstop of the period and a smart ball player, Bancroft was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame by the Veterans Committee in 1971 and is the only person from Sioux City in the Hall of Fame. Now, therefore, I, Robert E. Scott, Mayor of the City of Sioux City, Iowa, on behalf of City Council, do hereby proclaim July 1st, 2022, as Dave Ban Bancroft Day in Sioux City. Um. Say a few words, Jim. You gotta give more than a few for me, you know that, Bob. <laughs> yeah, three minutes. Uh, could you move a little to the side there and just a little bit? Well, th thank you. Uh, wondering how I got involved in this. A good question. I probably don't have enough to keep me busy, but. Pretty big baseball fan, as you all know. In fact, I've got memories not of this room. We were over at the Orpheum Hotel, the Orpheum <laughs> building at the time in the council chambers. But uh, Dave Bancroft is probably the most obscure name you would ever find in Sioux City. I could ask, hi, Lisa. I could ask a couple of hundred baseball fans who Dave Bancroft was, and nobody would probably know. He's a Hall of Famer. There's only 340 in the country, one of the most from Sioux City. And there's really no recognition of anything about Dave Bancroft. So about a year and a half ago, I had written a story for the journal about, hey, why don't we name this ballpark Lewis, or, uh, Dave Bancroft Field? Which I thought was a good idea, because Bob and I were on the council that named it Lewis and Clark. We wanted it to be Jim Bob, but that we didn't We wanted it to be Jim Bob. That, that <laughs> went down one vote to four. But, uh, and I was explained, you know, uh, Matt Salvatore has been great to work with talked about you know, naming rights, and I totally get that. That was the, the right answer to that. But we wanted to figure out to do something about Dave Bancroft because he's a Hall of Famer from Sioux City. So we got this thing going and trying to figure out what we got to uh, do to, uh, to really recognize him. He was born in 1891 on the west side of Sioux City. And there's a book, I'll, I'll just show you real quickly, called Beauty at Short. Uh, this was written by a reporter from the Wisconsin Journal Register 
in Madison, Wisconsin, which happens to be a sister paper of the Sioux City Journal. I'm still trying to get the journal to do a story on it. I'm having a hard time with that, but maybe <laughs> Dolly can help me out on that today. But wrote a story about Dave Bancroft. And the story is simply, it's amazing, and no one knows anything <coughs> about it. In 1903, he was on the Hopkins School grade school team. Team picture in there. He's sitting right next to a black player. 1903, that didn't happen, but it was an integrated team at Hopkins. Now you stop and think about that. That was happening in Sioux City. That was 1903. The next time he took a, a, a position, played with a black player, was in 1959, 56 years later, at an old-timers game at Yankee Stadium. And you know who played second? Jackie Robinson. This guy was best friends with Babe Ruth, grew up in Sioux City, played on these teams, played as a 12-year-old on teams that were 18 years and 20 because he was so good. And we figure, you know, it's time particularly, you know, historians or baseball fans know something about him. So that's why we're doing this. So we've got a couple of things planned real quickly. Uh, Tom Alicia is the editor or the writer of this book, Beauty at Short. He's going to be in Sioux City Friday. He's coming to town. He gave uh, the museum on loan all of his David Bancroft memorabilia. And I guarantee you, none of the, nobody in Sioux City has seen this stuff. He's got more things than, than the museum had. But he's going to do a free lunch and learn noon Friday at the museum. I hope you have, if people have a chance to come down. You don't need to be a baseball fan. He'll tell you what life was like in Sioux City in 1903 for this kid growing up on the west side of Sioux City. So he's going to do that at noon. They've got a big display of Bancroft stuff that he's brought around. And also, they, uh, uh, that night at the museum, thanks to Matt and uh, Parks and Rec, who've been great to work with, and the city manager's office, Bob, uh, we're going to have a dedication of a beautiful Bancroft plaque and uh, we worked with, a, with an artist from San Diego that did the Hall of Fame at Petco Park. And it's just a beautiful rendition of Bancroft and his highlights for his career. So once again, it's just a, it's a great story. Uh, I mean, no one knows much about this guy. And he's one of 340 in the United States that have a place in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Had no children, left Sioux City after he started playing professional ball came back occasionally. In fact, in 18, he was born in 1891. In 1903, Sioux City declared itself the baseball capital of the world, of the world, because the, the major leaguers at that time weren't making much money, and they came and barnstormed, played games in the offseason. Well, the Sioux City team, the Cornhuskers, played the Chicago Colts, who were the precursors to the Cubs, which tells you why they don't exist anymore. <laughs> and then uh, the St. Louis Browns. And we beat both of those teams, and we declared ourselves the baseball capital of the world. So this is good history. It's a lot of fun. Noon, noon on Friday at the, uh, at the museum. Steve Hansen, the staff in there, one of us all, the city staff. So it's going to be Dave Bancroft Day, and we'll see how it goes. But I hope everyone has a chance to stop by. It's a great story. I'm Thank down. you. Thanks, Thanks Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Thanks Mayor. buddy. Thank you. Many ball games with Jim, and that's just a little bit of how excited he gets when he gets to a ballpark. <laughs> Interview for General Lawrence Christensen. Tell us a little bit why you want to serve. I think we all know a lot about you, so just why you want to continue to serve. Uh, good afternoon, uh, City Council and Mayor Scott. Uh, I've, for the last three years, I've served on the airport board, and I think we've accomplished a lot in the last three years. Everything from the getting through the inspection process uh, to improving that, uh, to improving the entire uh, uh, airport. Uh, we were, now we're involved in, in a joint um, uh, uh, task to work with the 185th, the city, the airport, to uh, expand, uh, you know, possibly up to <coughs> towards $300 million as, as far as investment. And that's the, the, probably the biggest reason I want to continue on the board. You know, I would really appreciate your vote to uh, continue to do that so that we can see this uh, project uh, uh, through the, to the end. Questions? One of the big problems that we're facing is the shortage of pilots. I'm just curious, um, do you think that we're taking good steps to recruit pilots locally? And if not, what do you think that we could do differently? Absolutely. I think we're, that's, that's a great question. And I think we are taking uh, quite a few steps to get to that, that point. And I'm sure the people that are going to follow me here are going to tell you a little bit more about that. But right now we've got uh, 
at least one school involved in bringing new pilots. We've, all, we've got uh, possibly two more in the works uh, to, to get local people uh, to, uh, uh, to get into that uh, profession. And uh, we also have the 185th here, which is a, is, you can almost consider that a fourth school uh, because, you know, the, the, we, st we take uh, people from right off the street, bring them into the military, send them off to training, and bring them back uh, flying jet aircraft. So, you know, it's a lot quicker process uh, than, than uh, you would see on the civilian side, and the quality is, is bar none. Okay, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate your service. Right. Thanks for your time. Thank you. We'll go to consent agenda items three through 16D. Consider them to pass unanimously. If you want to speak on an item, please come up as I read it. If you want to speak on an item not under the agenda, please come up under citizens' concerns. Keep in mind, we do limit you to three minutes for your comment. I'll move the consent agenda. Second. Three are the reading of the city council minutes of June 20th and 22nd, 2022. Four is a motion acknowledging the board of adjustment actions. Mo Five is a motion approving the performance evaluation of the human rights director. I just want to call out really quick. Um, I read through the review and Karen Mackey, who is a treasure, um, scored extremely high across all, mar all metrics that were measured. Um, superior performance and role model status on just about everything. Um, and I really appreciated whoever did the research on how they were able to digitize a lot of the educational programming during the pandemic. This was during um, a time where you just couldn't go into businesses and you couldn't invite people in. And thank you very much for everything that you did there. Okay, six is resolution rejecting the bids received for the Jepson Park Improvement Project. On um, that one, I have a note too. So in there, it said that the bid was advertised. Um, if we're going to rebid, um, I think that we should reach out to companies directly and invite more companies to bid. Only getting one result on the bid seemed kind of discouraging. And it seems like we've had several bids in the past from other companies, so I'm not sure why we only had one on this one. Um, all it said was that the bid was advertised. Usually it, it says that it was sent out to a specific amount of companies, so I wasn't really sure what the verbiage meant on that. Mike Bauer, Neighborhood Services Project Coordinator. Uh, yes, this was emailed out to local businesses. It was? Um, by the, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure how to read that. And did any of them say why they didn't turn in bids? Why did we only receive one company that was willing to bid? Was it? Not we reached to out to the contractors and one of the biggest reasons was their inability to find subcontractors to do the specialty work for this project. Um, with the pour in place surfacing and installing the playground equipment was okay. the biggest reasons. Thank what you. kind of a completion date did you have? Um, the completion date was changed to June 1st of next year, 2023. Seven is a resolution supporting the IEDA application for work workforce housing tax credit program by the Apache View townhouses. Eight is a resolution authorizing fire rescue to receive funds from FM Global Insurance for the purchase of Learn Not to Burn books to be used in <coughs> elementary schools. Nine is a resolution temporarily closing various streets in the downtown area on July 30th to the, for the historic Four Street Car Classic, Classic Car Show and Cruise. 10 or resolution adopting plans and spec for the Andrew Avenue South Utility Improvements Project. 11 or actions relating to agreements and contracts. A is a resolution approving a change order number two to the contract for Stephen Har or Steve Harris Construction for Whispering Creek Drive Repaving Project. B is a resolution awarding a service provider agreement to HydroClean for the Southern Hills Drive Storm Sewer Lining Project. C is a motion approving an agreement to extend the towing and wrecking contract with Meyer Towing Company. And how long was that? Two months, right? 60 days, yes. Okay. D is a resolution approving a cooperative agreement between the Iowa Civil Rights Commission and the Sioux City Human Rights Commission. E is a resolution approving a contract for transportation services with Sergeant Bluff. F is a resolution approving a contract to l and Builders for the Sioux Aviation Center project. Mike, you want to say anything on that? Sure. 
or Mike Collette, Assistant <coughs> City Manager. So this is a project has been discussed for a long time. We went through a, a long process and I think we're finally here. Dave Poole's in the audience today and we're just happy to, to get started here. So just so you're aware, there's two parts to this and we're working through the last part with EDA. So that'll come back in July for the site improvements piece of this. But we want to get this in uh, based on the budget. We can go forward with this and within the 30 days of opening the bids. Okay. All right. Lisa. I'd like to abstain on this item as well as G1 and G2 for a conflict of interest, please. L&L okay. Builders? Yeah. Yes. Correct. Okay. G is R, S, and H. Iowa 1 is resolution amending resolution number 2021-0748 to correct the scope of work description for the Oracle Aviation LLC Aviation Center project. Two is a resolution approving a work order number 53 with RS and H Iowa PC for the Oracle Aviation LLC Aviation Center project. H is a resolution awarding a service provider agreement to TK Airport Solutions to remove and replace the canopy on the jet bridge at the airport. One or I is a resolution approving a fiber exchange RFP statement of work agreement with Fiber Utilities Group. 12 are actions authorizing payments. A is a resolution authorizing payment to Reich Painting for the Grandview Park Bandshell. B is a resolution authorizing payment to W.A. Klinger for the Hard Rock Tyson Event Center Parking Garage Project. C is a motion approving total payments issued for May of 2022. Back on 12A, um, much needed facelift. I think it looks really nice. I'm, I'm glad that we opted for all the repairs that we did but just a reminder to help keep it looking clean. So if you see suspicious activity or if you see any graffiti, report it right away. Uh, we got struck twice back to back and we don't want that to happen again. We wanna take care of what we have, right? So if you see anything, make sure that you call right away and report it. 13, purchasing A is Brentag Great Lakes. Of one is a resolution awarding a purchase order to Brente Great Lake for sodium bisulfate for the water wastewater treatment plant. Two is a resolution awarding a purchase order to Brente Great Lakes for coagulant for the water treatment plant. Fourteen are applications for cigarettes, of tobacco, nicotine, and vapor permits. Fifteen are application for beer and liquor license. And sixteen are boards and commission and committee meetings. Anyone to be heard on any of those? S is 5017 is a recommendation planning and zoning hearing an ordinance adopting a modified slight plan for 1310 West 3rd Street. The petitioner's arch icon development. PNZ recommends approval. I'll move that. Second. The hearing is now open. Jason Gary for planning and zoning. This item was heard um, as it uh, could not pass DRC. It needed some modifications to it, primarily due to parking. The inefficient, the, uh, the lack of parking available on the site didn't meet the exact code. We went through and had discussions. No one spoke in oppositions. We worked through the items and uh, came before you and are coming before you with a recommendation to approve the site plan. This one is a site plan review because when this site plan was reviewed before, when this development started, it became the site plan review goes all the way to council as a result of the of the uh, of, of the the site that was passed at the time. All changes have to come back to you. So there is a large number of deficiencies on this one in particular. Yeah. Um, as as I looked through them, there were uh, unit sizes. Um, they've shrunk unit sizes so, so that they can have more units. Yes. Um, there's parking spaces. It mentioned that there's neighboring apartments that have spots that are available. Yes. Um, but I'm I'm wondering if that would take away the available parking for for that complex. Sure. And then there was the imp impervious coverage ratio. Um, should we be concerned about any of these? Why are we just focusing on, on the stormwater detention? Um, I don't think, that wasn't a large discussion at our, at our meeting. Our discussion was more geared towards um, parking. They needed, they wanted to go ahead and increase the density for the, the, the site, and that's why the site plan is different from what it was proposed before. On the parking, they were deficient. It's not uncommon that apartment complexes are deficient. The reason, uh, but they did their own parking study. <laughs> their parking study showed that because it's low income housing, several people who live in the adjacent apartments or likely live in this apartments don't have 
have transportation. And so they, what they showed over time is that the parking lot next door, which they own, is roughly only about half full at any one time. So they, the only thing that we wanted to make sure was that we added a parking agreement so that if ever, at some point in time, these buildings get sold to separate, uh, to separate individuals, that there be a parking agreement between the two organizations that, share, that understand that, hey, you're gonna share parking, um, whether you're owned by one individual or owned by two. So that is probably primarily where we focused and also adding a sidewalk for access mm -hmm. across the board. But um, given the low income housing status, we understood that, okay, parking needs here are different mm -hmm. than what may be standard. And so that's, I think, what our commission more focused on than it was uh, any, anything else. Other than that, we, when we looked at this originally, I believe we had to make site modifications because of the compactness of the site. Do they meet, do, so the, the secondary site, um, does that yes. meet the old school, does that meet the parking requirements? Uh, uh, I, staff would have to remind me, I don't believe so. Okay. We, but that's been an operation for, for, for a while now. And are, uh, is the, their study include street parking as well? Um, I don't, you know, Chris can correct me if I'm wrong, but we never accept street parking study as part of the equation. Yeah. We never, even though we know it's a reality for apartment complexes, they, they may use street parking, mm -hmm. it's never a calculation that we will accept at PNZ as part of their offset. Chris Madison, senior planner, their other site uh, was also slightly under par per our code requirements, uh, but in 2020 they did supply the parking study as well as well as the site plan was approved from council. So it did meet, uh, but the petitioners have stated that it's only about 30 to 50% full at any given time. Do they have a lot of vacant apartments there? Or is this, are they pretty? Oh, petitioners in the audience, they may be able to answer those questions a little bit more. My understanding is they are occupied. Okay. Uh, it's not, the There's parking is not being utilized. Yep. Gotcha, okay. And the sidewalk that was put in? Um, that would meet kind of easy access between the parking lots, as I understand, right? That was our intention. Um, the promise of shared parking mm -hmm. is only reasonably good if there's access to shared parking. And so we did discuss, he offered it as a compromise that we want to be able, that if I have to park in the lot adjacent, I should be able to reasonably walk there during the wintertime snow by having a, a sidewalk. And my last thing was um, the opposition. I could not read the handwriting on that paper. Yeah. <laughs> could you, could you um, let me know kind of what the thoughts were? I'm not sure if anybody else had trouble reading it, but I could not read it. And my writing is pretty and, and we didn't have any opposition at the meeting, which I was a little surprised about. Um, but I think there was, as I remember, the opposition was, it was kind of geared towards we don't need more low-income housing or more apartment complexes in this area. This was already pre-approved for a different site for the same purpose. They just modified um, the density, parking, things of that nature. So by as i understand it by right they could have an apartment complex if they put the if they use the old site plan so from our perspective it was probably a moot point thank you anyone to be heard hearing is closed saying i have a conflict of interest. It passes 401, Mr. Moore abstained. Uh, anybody opposed to waiving the statutory rule? No. I'll move that. Second. Moore? Abstain. O'Kane? Aye. Janer? Aye. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. I'll move second, third. Second. Passes five or four zero, Mr. Moore abstained. 18 is a hearing and ordinance rezoning 1927 Street. The petitioners, Jason McClure, PNZ recommends approval. I'll move it. Second. Hearing's now open. Um, yeah, existing, this existing site on 27th Street was essentially zoned for residential. They want to use it for a light retail commercial operation, so the rezoning was requested. Uh, no one spoke in opposition. There was some discussion about a site plan and, and traffic on the street and whether or not there would be uh, some danger there, but ultimately it's uh, passed 5-0.
when was this area rezoned? Because previously it's the, it's the site of the old tobacco hut, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm fairly certain Chris is going to tell me they, they did operate, did they operate with a conditional use permit? They did not. The property was actually utilized as commercial from about the 1960s when the zoning code was ad adopted at that time. Uh, and since that time, it was operating as a non-conforming property. Uh, however, because it continued to operate as a commercial use, it was allowed to continue until the tobacco hut did close and was torn down. So that non-conforming status went away at that point. Sorry, my mistake. Has there been any discussion on how we're going to paint the bollards? Paint the Can't leave them cigarettes. The bollards, the cement posts. No, there was no discussion about how we're going to paint that at all. They look like that cigarettes. one. They look like cigarettes. Yeah. No, we, no, like no, 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 no discussion at all. So now we'll paint them like ice cream cones. Uh, or there's well, supposed to be snow cones. So snow, cone. snow cones. Bomb there we go. That's one of the Bomb most pop. interesting questions. Bomb pop. There you go. <laughs> From a council member, how are we going to paint that? I don't know. Anyone to be heard? Seeing none, the hearing is closed. S is five zeros. Anybody opposed waiving statutory rule? No. I'll move it. Second. O'Kane? Aye. Shaner? Aye. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. Moore? I'll move Aye. second and third. Second. Yeah, right. S is 5 0 uh, 19 is a hearing an ordinance vacating a portion of PV Street. The petitioners Robert Bertrand revocable trust. BNZ recommends approval. I'll move that. Second. Uh, you know what? I'm going to not move that. I withdraw that. I'm abstaining. Oh, I am too. Conflict of interest. I'll move the item. Second. Do I have to recall my second yeah. then? All right. Okay. Here, the hearing's now open. Uh, this is a simple vacation of an unused right of way. Uh, we did have do some discussion about whether or not it would be used if, there w if the land were to develop, uh, but uh, there was indication that it would, um, there would be better right of way coming from a different way than this PV street. It just, there's no use, and the petitioner requested it, so we vacated. One concern on this was it did say that the neighbor was using it or that an adjacent property owner was using what, what is, we're attempting to vacate. Is that correct? I don't remember any sort of discussion or anything in the staff report related to somebody being somebody else being using it. I thought I had read that. I could be mistaken. I didn't um, read Brent that. Brent Nelson, senior planner. Uh, the southerly 1,200 or so feet is being used presently by the owners of the property, Mr. Bertrand, and a different member of the family. Uh, other than the, Bert, the Bertrand family, I doubt that anybody has ever used that. Okay. It looked pretty grown over, and I was surprised because I didn't see any tracks in any of the pictures, but I, I'd heard that it was used. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else be heard? Hearing is closed. Second paragraph, I think, of the write up where you saw that. Passes 302, Mr. Moore and myself abstain, so we will not do second and third. Ordinance is amending Title IV of the Municipal Code by adding Chapter 4.86 after our clubs. I'll move that. Second. Anyone to be heard? Seeing none. Oh, I do have one thing. I, um, so, hey, it's you again. Um, first, thank you to you and to Chief Mueller for um, putting in the work for this. This shows that you prioritize our citizens' safety, um, which is, is very good to hear. That, that's something that is, is truly important. Um, I did have one question about how currently operating, I imagine that we have some type of a list or an idea of places that are in current operation, and are we going to be notifying them um, as this passes? 
if this passes. Stephen Postolga, City Legal. Uh, to my knowledge, there's uh, one uh, after-hours club currently operating. Uh, I suppose we could send them a notification of some kind. Anybody who is operating would have 180 days to get into compliance. That's good. All right. That was my only question. Anyone to be heard? I'm sure they watch city council meetings. Right? No doubt. You can hear it when you're home. I'm just saying. <laughs> Not everybody's a YouTube guy like these young kids. A lot of us watch it on TV. Passes Pfizer. Anybody opposed waiving the statutory rule? No. I'll move it. Second. O'Kane? Okay. Aye. Jayner? Aye. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. Moore? Aye. I'll move second and third. Passes 5021's resolution authorizing a 90 days delay in demolition property at 10 100 to 102 14th Street. The owner is Kent and Cammie Meyer. Your motion is with a bond, with bond, correct? That's correct, and I do have the, the bond already, and I do have all the estimates of repairs and other um, information, financial information that he does have the funds to make this. Okay. Evidently, his sale fell through that he mentioned last April at the placard hearing, right. and he's gotten the funds together to be able to make the repairs himself, so he's asking for a 90-day stay, and staff supports that. Is he a do-it-yourselfer, or is he going to no, have some subcontractors No, he'll contract it all He's already got in? contracts ready to go. Oh, okay. Yep. Did I move that? Uh, I don't, don't believe we I did. did. Yeah. I'll move it. And we need your name and title for the record. Daryl Bullock, Code Enforcement Manager. Thank you. For some reason, I never thought this one looked that bad on the outside. It the had a fire horrible. in the attic and second floor, oh, so you yeah. didn't get to see all the really nasty stuff. Yeah. I really appreciate you bringing it back. It's that's yeah. something that weighs heavy I've, on anybody. Unfortunately, out of the three that were given to stay, this is the only one that this actually came one. forward. I've learned that. I always mm -hmm. believe it. It's a lot easier once it's ordered demolished just to bring it back in case they you know, really truly mean they're going right. to. Right. Carol? No one to be heard? Okay, thank you. Passes 5022 is a resolution adopting plans and specs for the Pier Street water main replacement project. Somebody else can move this. I'll move it. Second. When you only have one contractor that has a pipe and then you offer them a $100,000 bonus, guess what you're going to get? High prices. But I don't know what you do. But we should have bought this pipe. We could have done a lot of other things than what we did. We could have bid it a lot earlier. Shame on us. Why do we bid projects that have to be done in May? Ever, the world bids this type of work in October. We knew in October this had to be done. So now... I'm going to get to pay higher water bills because of stuff we should have gotten done a lot sooner than what we did. Passes four to one, I vote no, and I'll expect my two phone calls before I leave the chamber, but that's fine. Citizen concerns, anyone to be heard? If you want to be heard, please come to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Kathy Banta. I live at 706 Isabella Street. I, uh, my concern is the excess animal permit that's required. Um, show you why. This is Chester. He's blind and deaf, and he was uh, abandoned by his family. This is Capulin. I did not name him. Uh, he likes to tussle, <laughs> as my dad would say, and he did it with the wrong dog and got his lower jaw snapped off. This one is Brutus. This is his bonded animal, Minnie. Uh, they could not be adopted out in Norfolk or here because of their age. Brutus is seven, Minnie is 14, and still kicking. This is Alan. He was stepped on when he was a puppy by his owner, who never had it fixed, and has a permanent limp. 
This is Bibi, and she's relatively normal. So my concern is what we're supposed to do is go to our neighbors and get 13 signatures from 13 strangers who I don't know why they have a say what goes on in my house or how I can take care of an animal. And the only one I've even met is the neighbor who punched me in the face when I asked him not to take up two spaces in front of my house for parking. So that leads me to my point. This isn't safe to do. It's not safe to ask people to go on other people's property. They're total strangers. It never was safe, but it's especially not safe for someone like me. So I would ask just a different method, maybe letters, a home inspection monthly. That, I think that would all be great. I just don't think this way is safe. Thank you. Actually, and have you contacted our animal inspection services people or the animal rescue to talk about some of those concerns or see if they could help you with that process at all? I do talk with Jerry from the Humane Society, okay. not from Animal Rescue. Okay, because it's not, it's not the Humane Society that would be in charge of that. Mm -hmm. So if you would go to Animal Rescue, I think that they would probably work with you, whether it was some of their officers or units or something like that, right. might be able to help you do that. because he's a like-minded person with animals, so yeah. Sure. No, just, I understand. Just starting here because I didn't know where else to start. Yeah, but, that's, I would reach out to Chris and Cindy and see what I do. Why don't you give Mr. Padmore your number and he can have them call you? Okay. Your safety is the most important thing. If you had a violent altercation with a neighbor, don't go to their house. Yeah. <laughs> don't try and get a signature. Okay. Thank you. Thank Anyone you. else to be heard? Ma'am, do you want to oh. give your number to Bob? No one else? Mr. O'Kane. Right. I have to get up uh, uh, if we're uh, going to uh, go. Oh. Andrew's here. Hello, Andrew Velasek, 723 Jones. I uh, was just looking for a synonym. Synonym for um, slumlord before coming here, and uh, I could not find anything. Um, Andrew, you're gonna have to speak closer to okay. the microphone. Excuse me, I was looking for a synonym for slumlord before I came to council today, and I could find nothing. Um, I think it's probably because it hasn't been used very often in places like the council. Um, I really appreciated when we were all here addressing homeless crisis and, but it's like, and there's a lot of empathy showed in this room. Um, but I think that's the obvious, an obvious first step to take care of something like that is uh, eradicating like slumlord practices here in Sioux City. I, I would like to talk a lot more, but I think uh, it'd be professional for me to end here. So thank you all for hearing that out. I would invite you, I um, am on the resident advisory board, and you're more than welcome. What's that, um, Matt? I'm on the resident advisory board, okay. and you're more than welcome to come to one of those. Um, what is they, the resident advisory board? They advise, so it's really a meeting of landlords and of residents, um, and we hold them quarterly, and, and you can definitely come there and um, at the very least meet landlords that follow good practices, but we also have other resources in the city too in terms of like our HUD team. We do investigations of um, HUD housing. So typically if they offer HUD, it's usually a pretty good bet that they're probably not a slumlord if they offer Section 8 uh, because they have to pass inspections. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's just, that's just a tip that I've learned. I've had a slumlord in the past, uh, so I know where you're coming from. Um, I was department to apartment before. And it's, it's really tough when you don't know your rights. Another good department would be um, the Human Rights Department. They have a guide on renting. Until I attended one of their meetings, I didn't know that I had those rights. And so um, it's a good place to stop so that if you see one of those practices happening, you can say, hey, they're doing this and this is wrong. And then you can file a complaint through the Human Rights Department and they can investigate. I'm trying not to make it um, personal because I know it's throughout the city. Oh, no, I understand that. It is that. very personal. Um, and I have been to the Human Rights Commission. Yeah. For feeling and it's a scary time right now. A lot of people have been yeah. feeling threatened by landlords in the yeah. city. Oh, I understand that. Um, and I, I want to make it clear that, you know, it gets to be feeling like you're like, a ranch animal or something, which is, uh, I, don't, I don't think a, even a ranch animal wants to feel like a ranch animal. So being chased out of uh, your home to hopefully this works this time and hopefully like what you recommend, it's like but you, what you're recommending is I'm moving uh, or whoever is in a similar situation would, would be moving. And I, If you file a human rights complaint, if they I, evict you, that that is retaliation. When you're, 
And what are you saying? I think you should be terribly careful. I'm not being smart, but that's that's you should refer because if you don't know, I mean, I we don't, I don't know enough facts to make, but uh, Karen can certainly look into it. I just at the very least, I would sit down and, and have a conversation. I think that's a good plan. Yeah. Well, I'll ask you for resources after. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else be heard? Seeing none, Matthew. All right, I just have a short statement I'm gonna read. Um, it's tough to remain optimistic with this past week's news. Human rights should not be cherry picked by the states. And on the cusp of Juneteenth, I would think that's a lesson learned from history. Women's rights are, humans right, are human rights. Let's stop um, taking away human rights um, and vote in people that will speak up for everyone. And that's all I have for today. Um, I echo what he said, uh, what Matthew said about that topic. Um, I also want to remind everybody there's a lot of construction going on around the city for housing developments, um, resurfacing infrastructure projects, so it's going to be inconvenient. That's kind of the pain of, of getting things fixed up, so I just want to remind everybody to be a little tolerant of that if we can. We've got some celebrations coming up this weekend. I think Alex has probably got those on his list, so I'm not going to infringe but I will be at the Mardi Gras Parade Friday. No doubt. When is that? Six o'clock. Six o'clock Friday. Right. On the trolley. On the trolley. Oh, on the trolley. Which is kind of unfortunate. I was just talking to Julie about that, about the Dave Bancroft dedication down at the ball field. So I'll be able to be down there. Um, Jim asked if I would be down there to say a few words. So I'll be down there. So you all better hold, hold your own on the trolley and make sure to have a good time. Um, hopefully, yeah, exactly. We see people at both of those locations. A lot of fun stuff happening in Sioux City. I would encourage everyone to be safe, especially at Saturday in the park. Um, uh, weather can be warm, um, and I know individuals um, tend to indulge a little bit more and have a good time, so I just want everyone to be safe and have a good time. Um, I would caution you to be careful. Exactly. You better believe it. I, I will be definitely be careful. <laughs> So that's all I have, because I'm sure we can talk about one, one last topic for sure. Yeah. What time's the Bancroft? 6 p.m. Oh, right at 6. Okay. I'd sure like to be there as well. That's kind of what I was thinking. I, yeah, and I don't know if that's something that can be moved or what we thought, but yeah. I didn't realize that I didn't have the parade on my calendar, otherwise I would have suggested different. So we got the parade July 1, Saturday in the Park July 2. Legal discharge of fireworks, July 3, 1 o'clock p.m. to 11 o'clock p.m. and July 4, 1 o'clock p.m. to 11 o'clock p.m. Unfortunately, and you probably have received some of the same emails I have. Definitely. Those that are uh, discharging fireworks illegally right now, um, I would ask that we continue to just hold off until Sunday at 1 o'clock, and that way everybody can anticipate when the fireworks will be discharged. And then also remember the professional displays that will be going on this weekend and 4th of July, Explorers Park, and, um, and other ones. Saturday in the Park, I think, will have one, won't they, after, mm -hmm. after we're done on So we can celebrate safely. Thank you. Move, we adjourn. Second. Mayor, one more item before you adjourn. Uh, Brad would like to get up and talk about uh, oh, yeah. summer That's watering. Important, right. Oh, yeah. Good afternoon, Mary. You'd ever figure out how to use that plant down south? <laughs> we wouldn't be here right today, now. but council received a memo uh, this morning regarding a program that uh, staff <coughs> considered implementing based on <coughs> council input. Uh, that program being odd even watering, and we move forward into this into the summer months with continued drought conditions. Uh, uh, we're experiencing fairly large demands due to irrigation uh, in the early morning hours, dropping storage structures below uh, normal operational set points. And what we feel is that if we can uh, balance the demands throughout the week, uh, instead of, for example, if everyone's watering Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that's when we see the greatest demands, evening that out throughout the week uh, would take the stress off of the treatment facilities uh, it could, could do a, a good amount uh, for the ability of our plants to operate efficiently. Um, 
that would mean that any odd numbered houses would water Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Even numbered homes would water Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, and then there would be no watering on Monday. Uh, that would be a good thing for us. As we saw yesterday, demands picked up pretty heavily uh, after 3 p.m. on Sunday, coming into Monday morning. Uh, we turned up quickly this morning to kind of uh, make up for that demand. But uh, what we're seeing is typical. There's a lot of communities that implement uh, odd even watering programs throughout the state and, and all over the nation, really. Uh, we just think it can benefit the system as a whole and looking for council input on implementing such a program. Would this have to fall under something like our snow emergencies do for that the mayor would have to step in? Well, Bob would never let that happen. He's <laughs> not happy about the snow emergency. I mean, <laughs> what, what's that fall under? There's already an emergency plan. There is. This yeah. is this, this is, is a part state of the plan. Of the, uh, conservation plan. Mm -hmm. uh, it is under step two of the voluntary yeah, yeah. Okay. plan. So while we wouldn't be implementing step two voluntary as a whole, it is part of it. Well, thank you for getting ahead of it. I know in our team's meeting, I said, let's try to stay in front of it instead of reacting to it. Let's be proactive if we're gonna continue with this drought. And I do kind of feel like sometimes, you know, we're just unaware of it as citizens that how dry it really has been, especially when we do have irrigation systems that keep our lawns and our flowers green. It kind of happens automatically for us because they're set on timers and they go. So I do appreciate you, you know, bringing this to our attention, and I really do feel like the council needs to stay ahead of it. Brad, do you envision when you would implement this? You're looking at like at least a couple weeks out, aren't you? Uh, we have a few details to iron out, um, but when we get that done, we will do a press release. So not sure exact on the exact time at this point. And Brad, the only thing I was gonna offer too is just make sure that you have a plan of attack as far as marketing that information. I do hear from a lot of people that, oh, I never heard of that or I never knew this was happening or anything like that. So just coordinating whether it's through social media, print media, TV and news stations, just doing it even on radio, different things that we can do to try to get that word out to reach as many people as possible. Um, I don't know what you could do. I mean, obviously there are certain neighborhoods that you know just as well as I do that probably have more irrigation systems, more sprinkler systems. I don't know if there's something we can do to get the word out in those neighborhoods or even large consumers, you know, the golf courses and other individuals that, you know, if we can ask for their voluntary compliance or see what they could do to help with that too. We've already been working with Ann on several ideas to when we roll it out to keep be able it, to get that out there. Keep it in the public's view. Great. And Roger, I know Roger's um, working on some uh, rain barrel retention ideas. Um, definitely hey. non-potable water. I was going to say I actually brought up the memo so I could mention that. Right? Yeah. No, that's not not yet. He wants. To, I told him he was going. to, Well, you 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 can, but I told him I wouldn't. No, that's because right. I think I'll he, wants to, he wants yeah. to spread it around first. But um, non-potable water is is something that we should definitely lean hard on especially since we're in such a bad drought i think just about every lawn that doesn't have a sprinkler system in town is probably pretty brown right about now um, so that's that's always an option too rain water or any water that you can reuse two weeks out wouldn't it also help with the publicity if it were on the council's agenda even if it's under discussion items True. Yeah. A lot of having it on the that. agenda because a lot of people do look at our agendas could we do that? That helped. Yeah, we could. We could put it on as a as a presentation or update on. Yeah. Yep. I didn't know a lot of people look at our agendas. <laughs> Worse for me. A lot of. Do you have anything else? No. I'm okay. Good. I'd like to move to adjourn. <laughs> I second a second time. Shaner. <laughs> Aye. Scott. Aye. Thanks, Brad. Waters. Aye. Moore. Aye. O'Kane. Aye. Stay as long as you want. Yeah. <laughs>